Model validation in ASP.NET Core is easy, isn't it? Well, yes, but we are still doing it wrong. If we place model validation in the controller, that's obviously not clean and it's obviously wrong. Should we place model validation in an action filter, that's much cleaner, but we can clearly do better. So what then? Stay tuned and we'll find out. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. Model validation in ASP.NET Core is something that we do almost day in and day out. And there are several approaches to it, but mainly all approaches they rely on the model state. So the question is where should we exactly perform the model validation? Our first instinct would be to do it in the controller because it is straightforward and you have the model state just there. However, this is not clean and from my point of view that's the reason why this is quite wrong, because it just clutters the controller with some concerns that shouldn't be there at all. The next approach, which is also my favorite, is to perform the validation in an action filter. And that keeps the code quite clean, the only thing is that we will need to decorate our actions that we want to run model validation on with our model validation filter. And there's also another part to it because this can become a little bit tricky in some cases. What we have here is a very basic setup. First of all, we have our API contracts, we have the error response, which is the primary reason why we want to have model validation in our ASP.NET Core, because in case of model validation failures, we want to return our custom error contract. And we have this post create, which is our contract for incoming requests when we want to create a new post. And we also have this validation filter, which is an action filter. We inherit this action filter attribute and we override this on action executing method. And the only things that we do here is obviously if the model state is not valid, we construct our own instance of error response and we set this as the result of bad request object result with our own error object. Now the problem is that if we run the application now, it will be a little bit tricky and the model validation will actually fail or it will not return the, re the result that we would expect. So let me run this application. And here we have our Swagger documentation and let's just try it out. Now I will place here a string that's only three characters long and then we will execute the request and look at the result. And the result is already here. However, if we look at the result object, we notice that this is the default validation result that comes from ASP.NET Core. It is not our custom error contract. And that's why validation or model validation in action filters is a little bit tricky. So let me close this down and also stop the application. The problem here is that ASP.NET Core has a filter for invalid models. And that filter is actually or has a higher percentage than, than our filter here. And this means that if we have model failures, that filter kicks in and returns a response before we even get into our own filter. Now, obviously the, the way to resolve, or there are different approaches to, to resolve this, most of them are wrong. Now, the most common approach that I have seen is to simply remove this API controller attribute from the controller. But this is really not recommended because if you do this, you remove a lot of other features that you might still want from an ASP.NET Core API, like contract negotiation and things similar to that. So that's something that we wouldn't do. Another approach would be to tweak with this validation filter. And instead of overwriting this on action executing, we'll have the override to on result executing. In this case, we need to also change this to result executing context and everything will still work. And actually in this case, as we or as our filter is or our method here is overwritten on the result executing, it means that by the time that the filter, the ASP.NET Core filter will try to set a response, we are notified and we run our custom logic. So then in that case, this response will be generated and we would have or we would end up having with having our custom contract here. However, this is a little bit hacky and it's surely something that we wouldn't like to do. So this is obviously not a best practice and I wouldn't recommend that. And let's do it the right way. To do it the right way, we need to come here to this program.cs file. And here what we need to do is we need to configure a behavior in our API that will suppress that default filter that ASP.NET Core uses if the model validation fails. So we could do something like this, builder services configure API behavior options. So this is the options pattern that we use here and we get these API options and we get to configure them. And on these options, on API behavior options, we have this property suppress model state invalid filter set to true. And if we run the application now, we'll see that we get our custom response back. So now everything is working fine. 
So now that we understand the caveats about model validation in action filters, then it's the question, what's wrong with that? And the answer to this is that, well, obviously we have moved some code into our action filter class and that's quite okay. But if we take a look at our controller action, we still have kind of like to use that attribute. We need to write a line of code that shouldn't actually be there from my point of view. So on my standards, this is not 100% clean. And I am a big fan of this paradigm of aspect oriented programming. So the question is, what if we can just wire something up and we don't have to clutter every controller action that we want to run validation on with a filter. So those were my thoughts when I entered the Twitter discussion with a user called Armin. And he suggested some weird things for me at that point that we should use some kind of factories to perform model validation. And at the first glance, it seemed to be a little bit counterintuitive for me. At least it would make the code from my point of view at that specific moment harder to understand and harder to read. The discussion went then on and at a certain point I had something like an eureka moment. Everything made sense again and there is really a way to perform model validation in a way that we don't touch the controller at all and it's actually also very easy to implement and straightforward to understand. So let me show you. The response on how we can do this right is still in this API behavior options. Because if we take a look here into these options and then we uh, place this top, we see that we have different members here. And one of the members is this invalid model state response factory. And we see that this is actually a func that takes in an action context and that should return an I action result. So it means that theoretically, if we can create a method that returns an I action result and that takes in an action executing context, then we can provide that specific method here to this func and it will then work out of the box. It means that what it will happen is that ASP.NET Core at that point will use our own method to create that custom error response and not the default model state invalid filter. We can even move this from here totally. Now, let's go here to the error response because what I'll do here in this case, I will add just a new method that would be a static method here, the public static I action result. Remember, the func returns an I action result and takes in an action context. That's exactly what we do here. Now we only need the logic that we need to place here in order to create our custom model or custom error response. But this is something that we already have here in this validation filter. Now the thing is that in this validation filter, we don't know exactly if the model state is valid or not. But in that factory, if that is used and it is created, we know that the model is not valid. So in this case, we can just even not take into consideration this entire if statement and just copy everything that we have in this if statement and just move it here in this static method. Now, the only thing that we need to do here is not to set the context, but we want to return because as we know, this func should return this I action result. And now we should be good to go. Now let's take this generate model and let's go back to our program.cs and let's just provide here. So it would be then error response. And then we'll have this generate error response. The only thing that we still need to do is come back to our controller and just remove. And I will comment out for now this validate model. Now we can run the application and let's test it out. Let's provide a string that is just three characters long and let's click execute. And if we take a look at our response model, we see that it is indeed our error contract and it is not the default contract that ASP.NET Core has. This approach should work on virtually all ASP.NET Core versions. Now in .NET 7, we have even some more fancy stuff that we could deploy to perform model validation. But as most production code bases out there probably don't run on .NET 7, I will stick in this video to this approach that's common, that is common for all ASP.NET Core versions. So as a conclusion, we can observe that moving the model validation in API behavior options allows us to declutter completely our controllers from any trace of model validation. So we don't even need a model validation attribute anymore. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and like it so it you will make it easier to discover for others. And if you are for the first time on this channel, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there is anything new on this channel. And if you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, feel free to head over to the comment section and leave your question there or your comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. 
This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.